Hi, I am going to demo length extension attack on keyed hashes. I am assuming you are already familiar with hashing and, and you know that they provide one way guarantee and are also collision resistant. So some background information uh, on this. Uh, this attack has been uh, around for a while and it's been known for a number of years. And these are some of the great references I have found okay so let's see how this attack actually works uh, so basically we have uh, so what the attacker actually knows and what it is trying to what he's trying to do uh, so he basically knows the digest of a uh, some message without actually knowing the key so the server actually computes the hash for some message and, and some unknown secret key not known to the attacker and the attacker is trying to do uh, something like this the second line here so attacker can actually uh, add on to the message and and also generate the hash without knowing the key so this is where it is so m2 equal to m1 plus something and uh, that we are actually trying to find out what is that something so how is it possible uh, uh, let's see here So this summarizes it well. Uh, basically, we can add, we can tag data and and a new length. So let's see how that uh, how 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 we are going to do it, do that. So for this exercise, we will assume that this is the secret key Yellowstone, and this is the data for which we know the hash. So one more thing, uh, when the hashes are computed, the algorithms automatically pad the messages to so that they fit in a fit in a in a block. So in this particular case, SHA one, the way it works, it actually adds one after the end of the message, and then it adds some zeros, some null bytes, and at the end of the block, I think it's like 64 bit. Yeah, so 64 bit block, uh, that uh, end of the block is reserved for the length of the message. So what we are trying to do what uh, here, we will actually forge the message uh, and include this padding in that forged message. So as if the padding is part of the data for the new data. So let's see how that works. So over here, I have this client. Uh, this is just a quick demo of uh, how hashing works. Uh, so this is a uh, Linux command line utility. So I am generating the hash for for message one two three four, and that this is the hash for this message one two three four, and if I change the message a little bit, the the hash completely changes. You know, so so just by knowing the knowing this new hash uh, for one two three four five, uh, and, and looking at this old hash for one two three four, uh, you know there is no way we could figure out that the messages are similar. So they just change. You know, they just differ by one byte here this in this case so and this is the server side so the server side this is you know let's assume the server actually computes this hash something like this and so this is the hash uh, this is the hash known to the attacker and the attacker also knows uh, this part which is the data but the attacker does not know uh, the key which which is yellowstone here So what I have done here is I have downloaded a custom, uh, downloaded the source code for SHA algorithm. I found it on GitHub and uh, I'm going to show, uh, I will just show how that works and if it is similar to, you know, what we already have. So as you can see here, I generated the hash for one, two, three, four, five with this uh, custom program and the hash generated is same as uh, before. So this seems to be working fine. So now, so this attack is possible because uh, we can actually forge the register. So there are registers used inside the program and we can actually forge the state of those registers. So that's how, you know, we can actually uh, compute the compute the hash uh, as if, you know, the, the original message went through those blocks. 
so let me show you uh, so basically what i did is i i created a custom program so this was the original sha1 program and i copied it and and changed that program a little bit so so this is the diff between the the original sha1 program and the the one i copied and changed so as you can see here this is from the original program these are the registers these are the this is the state of the registers and I change this state uh, of all these registers corresponding to this hash I got from the server so as you can see here it starts with e2 d161 so e2 d16179 and this is the last hash and another thing I did was uh, I added the message I changed the length changed the length of the message because we are trying to forge the the padding the original padding and 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 the new message will be in the new block so then the total message length will be original message length plus the original padding plus the new message length and the algorithm would all uh, yeah and that's that's about it so we have we have to make some guesses in terms of the original message length so this uh, this would work as long as the original message is uh, original message fits in one block and for this exercise we will also assume that the attacker no uh, attacker knows the length of the key so now uh, we will uh, add some extra message here uh, and then run our custom custom program to compute the hash so this is the hash of uh, so this is the hash we got from our custom tampered program and this this hash here is actually uh, not exactly the hash of this because we tampered it so this hash is supposed to be uh, equivalent to the hash for the original message which was uh, here so it would be message plus the unknown key along with the along with any padding which the original algorithm automatically computed and also uh, and then followed by followed by our new message here and also the algorithm will add some uh, padding so to get the padding we can modify our original program uh, to spit out uh, the, the padding Now let's see how, how that works. So that's the padding uh, here, eight, which is eight uh, one followed by zeros, uh, and then some more zeros, and that's the final length. So that's in hex, uh, the length for for our message, in bytes. So what we need to do now, we need, you know, in, in order to get the padding, we uh, since we already said that we assume uh, the length, we assume that we know the length of the message. So we can just generate. Uh, so the, in this in this case, this is uh, six plus five eleven, and this is our user data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this. So that's the padding. So I, I, <coughs> all I had to do is just uh, give in some some random characters, which match the original key length, and that would give me uh, the padding. So now we now we know the uh, original padding. Let's see if we can actually get the 
uh, let's see if we can actually verify that we got the new the correct the correct um, hash so over here it's a b b c 43 so starting from here that's our original message plus padding so i'm going to use python here So over here I am simulating the server side. Uh, this is the original message uh, with padding. This is the key. This is the new message. And I am going to compute the hash and see if this, uh, this hash matches what we computed here. And, and it does. So it starts with 65, uh, ends with 94. So that's that's all about this. The, so that's all this uh, uh, attack is all about. So the key here is you know we were able to get the get the hash, uh, which belonged to uh, you know the part of it belonged the part of the message belonged to the key which was not known to us. So hope you like this. Uh, please uh, do hit the like like button.